Hello, welcome to uh, ACI 2017. I'm Bob Gerber, an interventional cardiologist from the South Coast in Hastings and Eastbourne. I've got an exciting WebEx today with an esteemed panel uh, uh, that's following the bifurcation session that we had yesterday. That had a huge amount of interest. I'm going to start this round table discussion uh, where we're going to look at practical aspects of some of the literature of bifurcation stenting that will help guide a practicing interventional cardiologist. I'm pleased to introduce uh, Dr. Miles Behan, who's an interventional cardiologist in Edinburgh. Uh, Professor Dave Hildick Smith uh, from Brighton, who uh, is a colleague and a friend, and uh, Professor Adrian Banning, who is in fact the president of BSIS uh, and a professor in, in, in Oxford. So uh, I'd like to start off really by um, handing around the iPad where we're going to show a, an angiogram from a patient of mine. Um, and as a day-to-day -day practicing DGH cardiologist, we do face this. Uh, one of the anxieties we find is that how can we manage this particular type of scenario uh, practically? And Miles is going to kick off and, and give us some tips and tricks as what you can do. Well, thanks, Bob. Looking at this lesion, well, I think uh, one of the most important things is to is to practical aspects is to assess the lesion. I think you know what you want. To, we want to look at is first of all where where is the disease in the in the in the bifurcation we use obviously the medina classification where you, we look at first at the proximal main vessel that the proximal vessel then distal vessel then side branch and looking at this lesion i think it'd be a, a, a one zero zero true bifurcations are more difficult to treat than than uh, uh, more more simple lesions I think we're going to look at also at bifurcation angle, the angle of the side branch coming off the main vessel, because I think this will allow us to predict the chances of losing the main ves the, the side branch and also give us an idea of which strategy to use. I think it's important also to look at the size of the side branch. Here the side branch is, fa is fairly big and the side branch, the size of it is a marker for how much myocardium it, it supplies and whether we're going to worry about losing it. Um, and then also we, we worry about things like calcification and you know, these are the things I, I normally from a practical point of view will look at before I assess how I'm going to proceed to treat. And do, do, do you routinely wire both, both arms now of the bifurcation? Do you, would you say that was contemporary practice, David and Adrian, do you think that? Generally. <clears throat> so I think if you've got a side branch which has no disease in it at all and doesn't come off at a narrow angle, then you can probably get away without wiring it. But there's so little downside to wiring the side branch so long as you're prepared to manage your guide actively to ensure the guide doesn't go into the main stem as you withdraw the jailed wire. You know, that being the only downside, it's it, probably eight times out of ten you'll put a wire down the side branch. If it's, unless it's coming off at a favourable angle and there's no disease in it, I think wiring it is uh, very sensible. Is that your practice, Agent, would you? Yes, I think if you if you feel that that vessel is important enough when it's that it's going to have a clinical consequence that if it blocks, then it should have a wire down it. I think you there is nothing worse than uh, losing or blocking a diagonal uh, which uh, causes ST elevation. The patient's uncomfortable, and actually you didn't put a wire down because you were lazy, and actually it's got a flush occlusion. You can't see where it's coming from. And you know the wire sometimes makes it easier to to see where the the uh, diagonal was. It perhaps pulls the diagonal down to make it easier to wire. And if nothing else, it gets that chap off your shoulder saying you should have put a wire in that. <laughs> and I think actually, from, you know, it's just good practice. I think if it's a decent sized vessel, that side branch probably needs a wire. What sort of wires do you reach for when you do that? Uh... Well, for me, I just use a workhorse wire. Okay. I'm, I'm not comfortable jailing. I wouldn't jail a pilot wire, for example. I'd just use my Cyan Blue or a BMW, and that would be my usual wire. Is that is that roughly what um, uh, the well, others are I doing? Well, I mean, there were, quite a few years ago, there was a little bit of noise from the French uh, group who said, oh, don't use um, hydrophilic wires because you can strip off the coating. You can strip off a little bit of coating of any wire that you use, but there's a there's a balance here because if the wire is slightly hydrophilic, it will come out more easily. Mm. So personally, I choose a wire from the range that is partially hydrophilic, if you like, rather than a full hydrophilic polymer jacketed type wire. So something for me like a, a run through hypercoat, that kind of wire. I think the other I'm, I'm comfortable that that 
issues kind of put to bed. Yeah. My worry about a truly hydrophilic wire like a pilot is when your eye's on the main vessel, where is the end of that pilot going? And yeah, therefore, I'm often uncomfortable point. about just having that wire out of, and sometimes, you know, the conscientious radiographer's coning in, and that pilot wire is swimming towards somewhere dangerous. And so yeah. I just like to know where that wire is, particularly if it's not necessarily in my principal thoughts when I'm treating the bifurcation itself. I mean, that's a great, that's a great point, actually. And we saw in the Anjo review session yesterday that I was in, that exact, exactly did happen. So just to finish off on the practical aspects before mm. I want to ask David, because we've got David here about the literature. So we've got double wire. I, I take it you, you did a great talk yesterday on provisional approach. Just what is the provisional approach? Just quickly, what, what do you do? Well, I think the, the, the provisional approach basically is main vessel stenting. You know, so what, would, what someone would do is, as we've heard, if wire, both, wire both branches, predilate the main vessel, probably not predilate the side branch unless you were particularly worried about it for, for fear of uh, causing a dissection. Then stent uh, across the side branch, distal main vessel to proximal main vessel, sizing the stent with the, to the, the distal main vessel size. Then a reasonable uh, pot or proximal optimization technique with um, either a non-compliant or a semi-compliant balloon quite close to the ostium, so that you then have um, you know you should have then a nice result. If at that stage the side branch has got Timmy three flow, the pit, there's no chest pain and the uh, and no dissection in the side branch, then I would stop. However, sometimes, if, if that, that is not the case and the side branch needs some in, uh, attention, you might go on to rewire the side branch, perform a kissing inflation, and if at that point things were okay, I would stop. And then if not, you may then go on and, and, and uh, provisionally stent the side branch. What Dave demonstrated beautifully yesterday at ACI when treating this bifurcation is that actually doing that simple technique can take some time, it takes a lot of thought and it takes a lot of accuracy. And I think sometimes there's a perception that the simple technique is easy and I need to do something much more difficult than that. Mm. Actually, the simple technique can be quite complex and ultimately it's about the result. And what you need to do is be very accurate with your balloon. And I think what we saw yesterday with that sequential pot approach that you used, Dave, in a vessel which had uh, was about three at, its, uh, at this end of the stent and nearly five at the proximal end of the stent, was how much care it can take mm. to make sure you get a really good result with a single stent. Yes. And now really that, that is a shift, you know, and I think that's very different to jamming in a stent, thinking, oh, it looks all right, we're done and go. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think the, the use of proximal optimization, the accurate use of proximal optimization, is really, I think, what's come into my practice very much in the last two or three years. Yes. Can I ask Dave, before we go into literature, there were, there were rumblings in the room yesterday. Uh, obviously, you were doing excellent work in the lab. Obviously. So it's easy with us uh, <laughs> to sit there and look at it. Mainly about the, the, the use of the, the jailed wire and um, leaving the jailed wire in as you, if you were rewiring. And certainly that's something that I, I, I don't remove jail wires and I don't tend to take the wire from the main branch and then try and put it in or switch them over. Uh, and, and my sort of feeling is that the consensus is, is more towards leaving the jail wire. But what, what are your thoughts? Do, do you, did you used to do the other technique or now you've changed? Or No, I've pretty much done the same for about 10 years. But are you saying there were rumblings in the room, people sort of thinking, oh, you can't do a pot to that high pressure yes, leaving, leaving the, the wire, wire in jail? You should maybe take it out and rewire it. Uh, no, that that's sort of terrible. Thing. That's that's. Terrible. That's all wrong. Right. Because what it, what you what you have to do to get this right, I think, is you stent the main vessel and then you do the pot and then you do the rewire. If if you take your wire out and try and rewire before you've done the full pot to whatever pressure it needs, it may be twenty six, then you risk with your third wire going behind mm. the struts of the first stent and. Everybody remembers bifurcation cases where it's all going swimmingly, you've done it, you put the water, and then you take the next balloon, and it's like, oh, it's a, things aren't going. And it's almost certainly because you've got your wire in the wrong step, space. Yes. And to take your wire out of the side branch before you've completed everything that you do in the main branch makes absolutely zero sense. The whole point of having the wire in the side branch is to protect it and make sure that you don't lose the side branch. So, so taking Adrian's example for, uh, uh, as a case in point, if you, if you 
took your wire out because you thought, oh, this looks pretty. I I'll take the wire out before I do the pot because I don't want to go at 20 atmospheres with a high pressure balloon here. So you take your wire out, you do the pot. Oh dear, where's the diagonal gone now? You know, and that's a, a realistic possibility. So how, how often do we think, you know, what sort of percentage of the cases you've done where you remove the wire that the, the side branch goes down? Well, I don't remove the wire, so I don't know. I can't tell you. But, but, but the, you answer, see the answer to that is it does happen, particularly if you're inaccurate. And your accuracy is, guided, is aided by the presence of the wire. It's not at the wire. You need to look very carefully as to where the pot needs to be. But ultimately, this is about accuracy and a staged approach. And I think what uh, one of the things that OCT has taught us is that exactly what Dave is saying, that when that wire seemed to cross pretty easily, but that balloon doesn't go... Well, balloons do go now. You know, these are thin strut stents that we use. Balloons do go. And certainly if a new balloon doesn't go, then there's something wrong about that. And you're much better off taking it back and recrossing than you are getting a Corsair or something and jamming it down because you're probably lifting the stent back yeah. off the vessel because the wire is behind. Or it might even be behind through behind. Yeah. I mean, actually, the wire can be in any sort of position if you haven't done that properly. And in fact, if you, you, you know the Minnesota Heart stuff that yes. you yeah. demonstrated... It's terrifying when you see, yeah. with that kind of model, prior to a pot, yeah. what the stent looks like in the vessel, yes. yeah. and people rewiring, and it's going, ooh, mm. look, look where that wire went. Let's, 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 let's go on to the literature. So, you know, you changed, really, the face of bifurcation stenting with BBC One. I think there were some studies uh, before, but, uh, you know, the, the concept of taking on bifurcations even with big side branches and, and, and not necessarily going down a two stent technique really came from BBC One. What, what, what can you tell us of where we've come in the last, let's say, 10 years? Well, that's very kind, firstly. Uh, in fact, of course, the Nordic group did it first and is, as is traditional for the Nordic guys, they <laughs> did it in a sort of, you know, embarrassed sort of manner, oh, we've recruited 400 patients in six weeks, we're really sorry, it's poor quality. <laughs> yeah, and, and they had done the study. Uh, and BBC One and Nordic were almost the same design, and as you know, Miles has put yeah. together the 900 patients. And really that showed that a, a simple strategy in the vast majority of bifurcations it gave you a very good result there are probably a small proportion of bifurcations where a two-stent technique can be needed. But for the vast majority, if you were only allowed to use... I mean, this is, this is the, what a randomised trial shows you. If you were only ever allowed to use one technique, you'd have to choose the simple, the provisional. Yes, intuition will tell you there are times when you need two, but... If you were only ever allowed to use one, it would be the provisional technique. And both BBC One and Nordic showed that really very clearly. And since then, there's been a lot of um, work by the EBC, the European Bifurcation Club, sort of consolidating a consensus, and Adrian as well has been working on this. And I think Adrian is absolutely right when he earmarks the pot as probably the single most important technical change we've made to bifurcation stenting over the last seven years or so because even in Nordic and BBC One there was no pot it was not considered and Olivier Daramont proposed pot when there was a significant side branch and once people began to understand why you were doing it it really has been absorbed into everyday practice. And it changes your practice, Dave, doesn't it? Because it, I think when you do your pot, all of a sudden, the diagonal isn't so nipped. And perhaps you don't have to go on and put a second stent in. Yes. And I think, and the other thing which you presented that slide, Miles, about the, uh, the prognosis of patients. And I think what we're coming to now is actually the prognosis of the patient is probably more related to the health of the main vessel. And the main vessel is probably going to be best with a single stent. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the previous complexity of bifurcation, the more we think about it, the more we need to try and do a simple approach. But a simple approach doesn't necessarily mean a fast approach, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a lazy approach. 
I think you know what we saw yesterday was a very careful, simple approach. And actually, interestingly, on both the cases yesterday, mm. uh, we had planned to do a sort of the first one being a more simple case, the second one being a yeah. more complicated case. And on both those um, cases, especially the second one where people looked at it and thought, oh, God, you're going to need two stents here. In fact, we got to the point where people were asking, why are you bothering to rewire to consider doing a yeah, kiss? Okay. It looks great. You know, so, and that is, that's also a change of practice. People get surprised that actually you, you've started off with something that looks like this, and then when you've done the stent and the pot, actually the the anatomy, the orientation of the, the side branch looks much better than it did before. 